audio jam. Hey, many of you have been asking, how do we do overseas education? How do you go about doing it? How do you select any university? And I've got the right person for you today. This is Nithi. He's been my friend for a long time. And I know he's an expert in this field. Why? Because he's been involved in teaching a lot of colleges, best colleges in India and universities in UK, Malaysia, Singapore. And I don't think we can get a better person than this to answer this question. Nithi, since your last several decades of experience in teaching in Indian universities and in foreign universities, right? What is the difference in the approach that the way things are taught in Indian colleges and in a <coughs> university? Well, uh, thank you for having me here, uh, Krish, and for those kind words, which I'm not so sure if I fully deserve. But um, the truth of the matter is, and I, I think it's, uh, I've been you know, quite a beneficiary of foreign education. And I was part of uh, a UK uh, system, and I realized that when I actually left uh, for my overseas education, there, there was a lot of things that I didn't know. What is the course you did? Do you think? I did an MBA program, uh, of course, after a couple of years of my work, which I decided to do. And uh, the things that actually surprised me is the learnings which I never knew that mm -hmm. I was actually going to get, mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot to do with, 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 with the academic style and approach. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very big challenge for me because I was not exposed to uh, a research-based kind of an environment mm -hmm. and I suddenly had, was thrown on this and mm -hmm. said well you've got to go and find out mm -hmm. you've got to go and explore things mm -hmm. and I said well really how do I do that and uh, and that's when I realized that uh, the education system in the UK is such that even undergraduate students are actually exposed to the research environment and I was getting to know about it at the master's level Mm -hmm. you know, and, and this was a very, very difficult semester for me, particularly the first semester, because I realized that that is, is, is the big thing that I mm -hmm. need to come across in, mm -hmm. in, in a crossover, mm -hmm. which I eventually did, but it was a very hard learning. Mm -hmm. so, but in Indian education system is basically classroom teaching, a lot of theoretical stuff. Yeah, Generally. well, that, that's exactly the thing. Uh, the thing that I realized that, uh, you know, it's not making students independent mm. in their approach mm -hmm. and, and learning. Mm. So it's like, you know, you've got, they just give you a framework. Mm. You know, it's a framework, they give it to you. It's like a skeleton mm. that's thrown in front of you and you are supposed to add the meat. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not given a whole body. Mm. You try to put it that way. Mm -hmm. And that's... Ideally, mm. the way in which you know the entire learning system works, works. which I think is, is well, of course, apart from that, there's so many other things. There's there's this intercultural mm. interaction, and there is this networking opportunity, mm. which I think in today's context is far more important than in previous years, mm -hmm. because today it's all global, and, mm. and, and, and we've got people working from anywhere, any part of the world. Even right here mm. in India, we've mm. got many expatriates working mm. here. So I think it's kind of important mm. in that sense. They say you know, the world has become shrunk because of transportation, telecommunication. Yeah. People can say, I have breakfast in Singapore, lunch in Dubai, yeah. and sleeping in Australia. I think in such a, such a global uh, context, I think it's really nice when we are young to be exposed to that kind of, it broadens our horizons. I right? thought so, yes. It's so I think that's a big takeaway when you have some education which is it's like you're going out of the well and just seeing what is happening around right. and i think when you're in it gives you a lot of responsibility it makes you more independent right, right? right. right. you see the world from a bigger perspective it's like having an eagle's view right very right. true right. and, and i think that 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 really changes uh, an individual it changed me quite a lot because i saw the world differently mm. when i when i came back and, and, and that actually benefited me even at the workplace and how I saw things and how I was practical in the way in which I looked at things mm -hmm. was very different. Mm -hmm. you know, I was, in fact, I became more tolerant about people mm -hmm. because I came to know, well, when you're of your own kind, Absolutely. you're less tolerant. Mm -hmm. When in, in different cultures, mm -hmm. you actually become more tolerant, mm -hmm. you're more patient, mm -hmm. you're listening more carefully and you, you have a, you know, this entire yeah. way in which you approach True. life True. is itself different. Mm. 
Definitely, it helps us in any aspect of life, even in personal life after that. Right. right. When you're more empathetic and when you're sensitive to the changes in culture, right? Just can you imagine having a friend from US, another from Nigeria, another person from China sitting with you, right? And sharing, learning, getting to know their culture. I think uh, it's, it's something really beautiful. People miss out on all these things. Absolutely. Right? And I think that's important. And even when you look at it in terms of the faculties, mm -hmm. they come from across the globe. And you have to sometimes be, you know, very careful listener mm. to someone who could be a person from Holland, mm. and you have to, you know, get to used to the accents. Mm. You, know, you have mm. to learn it in, in different ways. And mm. tomorrow you get back to the corporate world. Mm. You never know. You could have a German who's speaking to you in English, and mm. he would obviously have an accent, True. which would be different from yours. True. And I think those are all very important. Mm. In India, what usually happens is any fast skin guy you say is a foreigner. Yeah. Right? We don't know from, but when you spend a lot of time interacting, right? even the accent, you must be which part of UK you belong to, you know? all the small, small little things, it makes a lot of difference you know, when you're part of an intercultural team, yes. right? project team. It makes a lot of difference. People accept you and you feel more confident in approaching yes. people, in making a deal, negotiating, right. in conflict management. Right? There is no fear inside you, no inhibitions inside you. True. I think it's very important. In all these things, learnings happens when you're young. The more we grow up, True. then you go. Already, there is a lot of resistance from inside, a lot of fear inside. So I think it's a beautiful idea to go abroad and study because it changes our personality altogether. Very true. Very, right? very, very true. Indeed. Uh, think, um, when I deal with especially engineering college students or even MBAs, many of them are not aware why they have taken the course itself. Somebody suggested it has a lot of scope or their cousin was doing, right? because of that they choose. Right? But I'm sure PG course is not like that, it's very important because it channelizes your career after that. So how do you plan? Yeah, and, and it's, it's good that you mentioned about this because I think it's one of the problems that we are actually, I mean I've particularly noticed with students today, is when they are colleagues in classrooms, they choose to decide to do the same course and they decide to go and do the exact same degree mm -hmm. overseas. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering whether the course has been decided because somebody is my classmate and both of us should do the same, or is because it's part of my career aspirations. And I think that's very critical. It's very important to make that decision based on being very selfish mm -hmm. to what I need in terms of my own career. Mm -hmm. And I think that planning is very, very critical. And, and I've also noticed that sometimes decisions are perhaps most of the time decisions are made based on you know deciding on a country first mm -hmm. and then thinking about mm -hmm. a course mm -hmm. you know and so with migration in people's minds they think about the country first which I'm, I'm not saying there's anything mm -hmm. wrong about mm -hmm. migration which is fine people all want to make their life better in wanting to be overseas which is fine but the decision making has to be appropriate one has to choose the right course and then think about, okay, which is the best place to do it. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is a very important you know, way of methodology in which one needs to choose. And of course, there's various other things that comes along, which is whether one is going to self-finance, one is going to take an educational loan. You know, all that basically matters and is about the study program. It could be a, a two-year program or one-year program, you know, all that matters. Well, I, I hear that UK has a one-year program. That, but is there a compromise in somewhere that you're doing something in one year? Uh, yeah, it's well, uh, it's it's interesting because um, the, the well, this is my take on this. I think the one year masters is fairly very good, mm -hmm. and the simple reason is because it's very intensive, and it's not one where you get lots of holidays mm -hmm. and you do very little, and then there's a misconception that people tend to think that that's how it is, but that's not the case of it. The one year masters hardly gives you any holidays to be very honest with you. You probably get a couple of days during Christmas and a couple of days during Easter time, mm. but that's about it. There is no such thing as a break during June to September when you're actually on your project. So it's a one year full intensive course. And I think it's good because I think we are in a very fast paced environment today. Mm. And imagine learning theoretical knowledge is for far too long, and especially in a technology-related masters, you know, 
IT is a is a is a very good example. Is that you you sleep a little longer and you suddenly realize something has come up with you in the market. So and I think it's it's even important that you know it's done quickly. Mm. What's the cost we are talking about for one year course? Uh, in the UK, it varies, of course, between universities and, and the programs. But if I were to give a general ballpark kind of a figure, it could be anywhere between twenty and thirty lakhs with with living accommodation put together. You know, and that I would have thought would be the full you know, kind of a course fee in general. You know, that's mm-hmm. how it should fall. So if it is a two-year course in US. Uh... It could very well supersede that figure. Mm-hmm. Well, because in I think in US and Canada in general it's a two years program. Uh, that they've got more breaks in in, in in terms of their semesters. So which simply means that well there is you know they do give some sort of a scholarship okay. sort, of, sort of thing that happens in the second year. People tend to think that I'm sort of saving, mm-hmm. but I think overall they actually end up spending maybe even more than what they would have actually spent in the UK. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're telling this is more of a compact course. Yes. They put everything inside and more intensely, more practical, research oriented. Yes. That then you say one year's time. Exactly. And uh, opportunities for a job after that in UK. Well, you, you a of course you quickly get into a job mm-hmm. quicker than mm-hmm. you know what you you know rather than spending mm-hmm. two years. Yes. You save one year. You save one year. And now of course we have a very interesting opportunity where the. UK has now said, "Well, welcome back with the post-study work visa, mm-hmm. which simply means from students graduating from so next year, mm-hmm. they can actually remain in the UK for two years uh, without a sponsorship." Of mm-hmm. course, more details are yet to come out on that, mm-hmm. but we are very clear that students are now allowed to stay back from next mm-hmm. year, which is a very good news. Mm-hmm. So I think UK is definitely a place people should plan. Oh right. yes, of course, it should certainly be in their decision making. Course, uh, it may not have been in the last few years, but certainly it has to be as part of the decision making, at least from those who are deciding on this. Yeah. Uh, if I was a student planning to do my overseas education, my first approach would be to do some homework, do some research, right? So, what would be the scales I'd be using? Maybe the ratings the universities have, the rankings they have, but there are so many bodies now, right? Sometimes it's very confusing, right? So, how do I make the decision? Yeah. Um, this is uh, well. We are today in an age where there is so much information that's thrown on the internet. There's so many rating bodies. There's so many perspectives and views given by different organisations. And uh, in the end, if one has to really make a decision now, I think it's going to take years before mm-hmm. one can actually decide where to actually go to study. But well, I think that's where we are at this point in time. But I, I think, uh, well, on, on, a, on a serious note. I think it's quite important for a student to look at in terms of the the uh, the ecosystem wherein which the, the course that they've actually selected is critical. Of. Mm-hmm. I think that's important. Uh, uh, overall, university rankings sometimes really don't make any sense in the true sense mm-hmm. because uh, today we've got departmental rankings, mm-hmm. we've got uh, universities that whose rankings are given based on research. Okay. Right? So the popularity of a particular department comes out of research. Mm-hmm. So the overall ranking of a university being 80th in the world mm. may really be irrelevant if the Department of Engineering could perhaps be the top 10 in the world. Mm. So it it's really matters in, in terms of that. And I think it's also about the ecosystem. Mm. It's about the courses at which you choose to study. Right? It also really matters. Ecosystem, what do you mean? Uh, well, Let's say, for example, somebody is uh, wanting to choose a program like shipbuilding, mm-hmm. right? A master's in mm-hmm. shipbuilding related, and um, and it's important that the environment in which the university is gives that particular industrial experience for a student. Mm-hmm. The opportunity, perhaps, that would come with just the, not just the projects, a possibility of even making use of a work environment mm-hmm. post that. Mm-hmm. You would have interfaced with the organizations which are right there. Make for reference. Absolutely. I, I think it makes really an important you know, sort of a decision making based on that. And I think those are things that people are perhaps not really thinking about. And I think students should give more emphasis. Mm-hmm. Uh, take, for example, um, you know, the, uh, the the data labs of, mm-hmm. of Scotland right okay. now, which is really, really you know, established quite well. 
And uh, if that's going to be an environment that would help you, uh, choosing universities which is in and around the area where you can get access to these could make a lot of difference as well. Sure. So I think the ecosystem is an important component of one's decision making and, and I think that's really critical. True. Sure. Is, uh, is there a cause on breweries uh, happening now? Yeah, yeah, well, well you know, if well, one wants to do on, on brewery then Perhaps Scotland is the best place, isn't it? I mean, why would you want to learn uh, on brewery in somewhere else in the world when the Scots make the best? Correct, correct. So as right. I said, that is what is the ecosystem in which you study. I right? You need to be close to that environment. It gives you the first-hand information. Absolutely, because I think it's a lot practical, isn't it? It's not just so much about theory. You need to be there at a place. You need to experience it. You Accessibility to these uh, organizations mm -hmm. should be made possible. And I think that is exactly what's very, very important. The industry interface that the university must be having. Absolutely. And I think that that's critical. So ranking bodies are there. They have got various parameters. Some universities don't even participate in these rankings mm -hmm. at all. I mean, they, they don't get involved okay. at all. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. they, you might actually miss out on some of the best because they are not willing to participate. Mm -hmm. There's a good possibility there as well. So we actually need to do research and then find out, talk to people yeah. and then take the right decision. Exactly. And of course, in the decision making process, everything comes along. I mean, it, the cost factor comes along mm -hmm. as well. Because some of the best universities may be charging the top of the fees. Then we need to strike a balance between budget and, and also a reasonably good university. Mm -hmm. So that balance needs to be struck as well. Right? So it, it, in the end, you can only choose one. Yeah. So that's how it has to work. Uh, Niti, so what you've just said is uh, when you choose some of the parameters that we need to keep in mind is ecosystem, uh, the departmental ranking, job opportunities and budget. Mm -hmm. Right? This is what... Uh, yes, of course. Uh, these are the balances one needs to look at in terms of you know, individually what it means to me. Mm -hmm. what, and in, there are cases in which an individual can give more value to one and less to another. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's important because there are people who would say, well, this is a program that I want to do and I'm going to come back and take over my dad's mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. So their interest may not be much on mm -hmm. job opportunities. Mm -hmm. Their interest is to think about the course itself so they can come back and take over their family business. So I think it's very important, I think, that case that we need to have some mentors. People are there, people are there to consult you who can, you know, remove some of your doubts, gives you more clarity, yeah. right? So when you approach some agency, I think it's very good um, idea to approach some agency which would be there, maybe handhold you till the process is yes. completed, right? Yes. And, and I think that's very, very critical. And it's not about just applying for a course of study. It's about the mindset. It's about the thinking process, why a particular course has been chosen and, and what's the rationale behind it. And this conversation is very important with, with an educational counsellor. And I, that's the, the, the component which I think is very, very critical before decision making is really made. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. And uh, I'm sure children who are planning to go abroad, they'll also be thinking about exploring the options of part-time job. We were talking about UK one-year course. Yeah. Will it be possible for them to do a uh, part-time job or what is your thought on that? Well, I, I, I think the, the well, while I did say that there's a huge advantage mm -hmm. with regard to a one-year program because you actually quickly, you quickly finish the program. But it is important that we don't look at part-time as the means to which you're going to pay for your living. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important because the academic is the focus. That's what a student is going for and that's what they should concentrate on. And I think the part-time job during semester breaks, whether it's Easter or Christmas, one can experience it, but that's more for the purpose of, you know, getting to know people, the culture, you know, and the interaction component, and that's the important part. Mm -hmm. Not because they want to get that part of the money to pay for a living. Mm -hmm. And if that is going to be the case, then it can affect them academically because it, it, it can be a big psychological mm -hmm. hit. It, it's quite important that they look at part-time as an experience. True. I always become the penny wise and pound foolish. Right? To do your course well, get good grades, get a good job. Right? Exactly. And, I, and I heard you say something that uh, 
there is a minimum pay in UK. Yeah. The minimum pay is 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 followed by the law, regardless of your nationality. Okay. Uh, so where you come from is actually quite irrelevant. It doesn't matter you, what job you're doing. You have to follow under the minimum pay category. So you rather concentrate on academics, get some good scores, and capitalize on the post-study work visa. Why would you want to compromise on your academics to get a lower grade, and you know, and and concentrate more on part-time jobs? But it's. It, it will be completely silly to to concentrate in that way. Rather focus on academics. Yeah, fantastic. So this is been Niti with us, and uh, I hope you started to have some ideas. And if you have any doubts, right, any doubts, any clarification, please get in touch with me and give you more information. And if you want more information regarding how to approach universities and how to do overseas education, please don't forget to read the description box, which is below this. So wish you all the very best and be blissful. Niti, thank you. It was a great pleasure as usual to spend some time with you. And I'm sure we'll be doing more videos and I'm sure if there are doubts, we'll get Niti on board and we'll clarify those doubts also. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for having me. Be blissful. Thank you. Thank you.